The ridiculousness uh, of Just Stop Oil continues. Uh, another day, if you ask me. Uh, Johnny Bairstow, did you see him, the cricketer? He was having absolutely none of it. Look at him. Uh, Just Stop Oil decided to go and interrupt the ashes. Uh, the second ashes test at Lord's today started spraying their powder all over the place uh, before Johnny had none of it. Picked him up uh, and carried him to the side and... I would say dumped him down like a sack of rubbish, quite frankly. That's my interpretation of it anyway. Uh, what do you make to it all? Uh, do you think, do you sit there and go, yes, I absolutely support this? Uh, or are you on the other side of the fence that thinks, actually, it's just absolutely ridiculous? Uh, even Rishi Sunak, now he's been speaking out and praising the cricketer uh, on his bouncer. He was like a bouncer, wasn't he? If he ever finds himself, you know, at a career junction in how can I make money? You've got a career in bouncing on the doors, if you ask me. Uh, let's speak to James Harvey, a spokesman person for Just Stop Oil keeps me company now. Good evening to you. Um, can I just clarify with you firstly, why do you think your cause trumps uh, everybody else's ability to either go about their business with your slow marches or just enjoy a nice day out of the cricket? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Michelle. Um, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You use the word ridiculous a lot, but surely what's more ridiculous is the government's inaction on the climate change. They, their own climate change committee today have said they're failing, they're not meeting targets. So you've got cricket, it's a great sport. I love watching cricket. It was interrupted for a few minutes and probably the interruption probably entertained people, but it gives us this platform to discuss these issues which are so important. And you know, countries like India, Australia, Pakistan, where cricket is loved, they're not gonna be uh, able to play it soon because it's just gonna be too hot. They're approaching wet bulb temperatures where thousands if not millions of people could be have their lives at risk. A little bit alarmist there, come on. People are no, not going to be able no. to play cricket imminently. I mean, come on. It's, it's not alarmist. It's what the, uh, the UN are saying. The UN are saying, so look, this statement, the UN are saying we have a short window of opportunity to secure a livable future. That's what the climate scientists are telling us. So we need to stop all new oil and gas, simple as that. Well, it's simple as that to you, because that is the belief system that you have, and you taking those things at face value and all the rest of it, and that is your priority set. Other people are sitting there saying, do you know what, times are hard, I just want to crack on with my life, whether it's getting myself out and about, going to work, taking my kids, watching a bit of cricket, um, I don't know. Is he still there, is James there? You say about uh, people speaking out, Trevor Nielsen, uh, one of your primary funders previously, he's been speaking out, I'm sure you're familiar with what he uh, had to say. He's not happy with you guys at all, he says that you're basically demonstrating for demonstrating sake, uh, it's performative, highly ineffective, etc. You know, and this is a guy that's on your page. Yeah, I, I, Trevor, I don't, I, I've not met him, not spoke to him. I know he stopped, he stopped being involved with the Climate Emergency Fund a couple of years ago. So I think this is really old news. We've got the likes of Adam McKay funding us. Well, it's uh, not old news, James. This was two days ago, 48 hours ago. It's, it's, it's the, the, the right-wing media narrative that likes to cause division. What, what's actually happening is... No, hang on, hang on, okay, I'm not having that. It's not the right-wing... It's not right-wing media, excuse me. It's not right-wing media making stuff up. This is one of your primary funders previously, a man that is on board with what you're saying, hence he's put his uh, money where his mouth is. He's co-funded the Climate Emergency Fund. These are his words being reported. Because you don't like them, what you're now trying to say is you're trying to dismiss it as, oh, it's just the right-wing loonies trying to divide society. That's not what it is at all. OK, let's, let's just say he stopped being involved with the Climate Emergency Fund two years ago. That's why I'm saying it's old news. In the meantime, we've got new supporters, um, donations every month which are keeping us afloat. And look, this isn't our cause, this is everyone's cause. It's ordinary people out on the streets taking action to stop new oil and gas, which is so important that we do. I mean... No, it's important to you. So it's important to you. No, it's not important to me. No, I couldn't care less. I don't stay awake at night thinking to myself, please, Rishi Sunak, don't, fu don't fund uh, new oil and gas licences. I don't stay awake thinking about that. Many of my viewers will not. So this is important to you and what you guys are doing. And by the way, James, you say thanks for giving you the platform. I've got to be completely honest. And I don't mean to be too rude. Uh, the reason I'm talking to you is because I'm covering someone else's show. If this was my show, I wouldn't be talking to you because I think the best thing the media can do with you guys is starve you of the oxygen of public publicity is because we keep reporting on all of your daft antics that you keep doing them so, so so do you not want a livable future michelle well yeah but i think my future and the future of my two-year-old son is absolutely fine i do not they, keep myself yeah, awake at night in the way that you do 
Pardon? Do you believe in climate change? Yeah, to a degree. I don't, I don't sit here thinking, oh, my God, any moment now uh, the world is going to spontaneously combust. No. I don't. And I also don't think we're anywhere close to a situation where we can rely on renewables uh, when it comes to a consistent source of energy for this country moving forward. No. The, um, the IPCC reports, the scientists' reports, have the solutions there to transition, a just transition away from oil and gas. Um, if you don't believe the scientists, then I'm not sure what we can do with this conversation, Michelle. But it's not a case of not believing scientists. You're not listening. You're not listening. The media I am listening. listening. Well, hang okay. on, make your well, mind up, James. We have because... a short window of opportunity to secure a livable future. So, so what, what, what is wrong with that statement that you're not hearing? But I am listening to you. In fact, actually, what I would say, you started this piece by saying thanks for having me and having this conversation. So you can't then say that people are not yeah. listening. Well, by your own admission, you're sitting here having the oxygen and publicity and having the conversations. What I'm saying is, yes, scientists go out and about and make their proclamations and all the rest of it. When you look at some of these models, they are often based on very worst-case scenario modelling. And when anyone dare criticise it, by the way, uh, you get called yeah, names, yeah, yeah. you get put in a certain box and category, and it's not on. Look, if you talk to most climate scientists, they, they, will, they will paint a far worse picture than what's in these reports. These reports are peer-reviewed and they have to be conservative, which I'm sure you would have loved, um, uh, in, their, in, their, in, their, um, in, in their findings. They have to be all proven results. Look, we're on, we're, we've blown 1.5 degrees. We're on course for two degrees, uh, if not more. Um, people are already dying. Around. When I live in Norfolk, we've had harvest failures, floods and wildfires. Oh, wildfires. People always wheel year. out this conversation about wildfires, by the way. When you sit and actually look at these wildfires, a lot of them are started by absolute pillocks uh, messing around and doing things that they shouldn't be doing, uh, as opposed to the heat of the sun. Anyway, James, fascinating conversation. We could continue it, but yeah, for time reasons you. only. I'm, I must leave it there, but James Harvey there, spokesperson for Just Stop Oil. All sides valid um, on GB News. Which side are you on? What do you think to it? Are you in the camp of James? Do you lay awake at night thinking to yourself, what is the future going to be for my children, for my grandchildren and indeed myself? Or do you think it's all just a little bit hysterical and will you pack it in, imposing your visions and views on the rest of us? Your thoughts?